What's going on ladies and gents? Hope this video finds you well wherever you are in the world today. Today I want to talk to you all about the sink or swim mentality. Me and my homeboy have been talking about one of his friends that he's been trying to help out who just can't seem to, to get it together, constantly you know, moving back and forth to his parents' house, staying with friends, sleeping on people's couches, just does not seem to want to get it together either and he keeps trying to like help him out, help him out. And I told him, I said, man, you got to quit throwing him a floaty. I'm like, you gotta allow him to taste what it feels like to sink or swim. He needs to be thrown out there in, into the water and either sink a little bit and allow a water to get in his mouth and allow real life and reality to wake him up to want to fight and survive for himself and not just float and depend on other people all the time. For me, when I was four years old, um, I wanted to learn how to swim. And my dad um, taught me how to swim by just throwing me in the water. While we were on the cement, he talked to me, he said, hey, this is what you're gonna do when you get in the water. You know, this is, gonna, this is how you wade in the water. This is how you stay afloat. This is how you tread water. And so I'm four years old and I'm taking this in, but still I'm nervous, I'm scared, because all I can think about is the fact that I'm about to get thrown in the water, but I'm still trying to listen to my dad. Long story short, he throws me into the water. And of course, I start to sink a little bit and I get a little bit of water in my mouth because I, I don't fully understand the importance of like keeping my mouth shut even though I was told that and to hold my nose and all these things when the real world in life hits you everything that you you know your knowledge or the theories that you've been taught are put to the test and then that's where understanding comes from right and so at that moment I everything went away I kicked into like fight or flight mode and I began to swim I began to doggy paddle I began to move my arms and just slowly figure out how to keep my head above water and that's something that philosophy has stuck with me my entire life and that's why I don't fear going against the grain and being different um, though it is hard and it is a struggle it has made me a man it has made me a man that can stand on his own two feet I don't have to depend on other people to provide for me I have uh, a roof and shelter that I put over my own head and I see a lot of men today who aren't in these type of situations where they're forced to taste rock bottom or they're forced to taste a little bit of that water when they're sinking because everybody around them is trying to save them but I, and I have this like this belief that if any man's going to be around me and want to hang in my life, it's about us sharpening each other and getting better. You know, um, if you come to me and you're complaining about a situation or you're in a sticky situation, you're trying to get out of it, we can meet and we can game plan and we can talk about it. You come to me a second time. OK, we're, we're going to talk about it one more time. You're gathering your thoughts, getting your blueprint together. The third time you come to me, I'm going to I'm going to tell you, like, hey, bro, you got to You got to take action. And if I see you just just wanting to talk and come complain and not take action, then I know that I can't have you around me because I'm a swimmer. Right. And I can't have you holding me back. So when you come to me and you step to me, it's about me sharpening you, teaching you what I know that has kept me afloat, but also helped me to propel and to go forward and to swim in different waters. One other story just to share that has helped me with my mentality as a man and what's made me be independent and understand the realities of life is I left college early. So I went to, to undergrad for two years and then um, at 1920 I decided you know what I want to go you know figure out trades and just figure out like what I can do to make money for myself and be a full-time entrepreneur. And so what I did is as soon as I got back, my parents came and picked me up from college. As soon as I got back home, um, I immediately found a job on Craigslist the next day. And the job was for working for a tree company just as a, a simple laborer, right? But my mentality anytime I go anywhere is I need to learn everything about what's going on and I wanna figure out how I can maximize my potential to make the most money because I'm a believer in the, in, in the harder I work, the more money I wanna be paid. I wanna be paid for every part of me. Um, and so I thrust myself into anything that I do. Long story short, um, I, I started out just simply as a laborer, just dragging logs, you know, cutting a little bit of stuff here and there, having to learn how to use a chainsaw. And I got pretty proficient at that. And then one day, uh, maybe about a month into me working this job, uh, one of the climbers, you know, didn't make it in that day, but we still had a big job that we had to get done. And so my boss looked at me and he saw my work ethic and my focus and my drive. And he said to me, he's just like, man, you shouldn't be doing this. But he's like, man, I know you're smart enough to where you'll think and you'll be safe and listen to what I tell you to do. It was another sink or swim moment. He said, you know what, I'm going to put you in the tree and we got to cut this tree down and we're going to do it with the crane. It was just him and it was just him and I on the job something you totally shouldn't do, that especially after only like 30 days experience. But it was another sink or swim moment. He taught me and told me what to do. I put on the saddle and I got in the tree. And that moment 
was a, another mind-blowing experience for me because it, it forced me to understand the realities of life. I'm, I'm kind of playing with death. Uh, logging and tree service is like the deadliest job, job in the world. Every day after that, like I got more and more comfortable with putting on the saddle. I got more and more com comfortable with being responsible for my life. And it taught me how to compartmentalize in a healthy way as a man because I knew like whatever was stressing me out or whatever I was mad about or fussing about before I climbed to that tree, I know I had to turn my mind off and do what I needed to do to get the job done as well as thinking about my own safety and for my crew and those around me you know and so it was moments like this and like again at four years old and then like in my early 20s being forced in these environments by choice right because I was eager to learn I wanted to learn how to uh, be in the pool and not have to wait for mommy and daddy or to have floats I wanted to figure out how I could scale and to make more money so I said I'm gonna learn how to climb trees and how to do everything from A to Z that has been my key to success you know top of you know my relationship with God but my work ethic my focus and my desire to be a man and to be um, to be independent you know I see a lot of young men today who for various reasons right they maybe their their mother and father coddle them society just in general just coddles people today and does not force them into reality and I'm a person that like I understand how the real world works you know and I and until you taste rock bottom until you're thrown out and have to fend for yourself or put yourself in that position you're never really going to grow you'll just continue to just get by when you learn to hunt and, and to feed yourself as a man you go to a whole nother level it teaches you how to be responsible right uh, i think a, a lot of guys don't have any form of responsibility unless they end up you know having kids at an early age or you know getting married but as a single guy especially if you're living with other people or living at home i understand there's a time and season and place for everything but your goal and vision for your life is is it should be to be independent it should to be um let i want to be able to provide for myself and potentially provide for somebody else if that's what you so desire but i just want to drop in and share that with you guys today and, and encourage you especially the fellas man learn to be independent forced Force yourself into environments where you gotta sink or swim, and and you you, you can't depend on other people. You gotta get in the, get out in the field and get into the the real world and understand that man, it's feast or famine, and you gotta choose to turn that part of yourself on. A lot of us never get to that, you know? I understand now, especially being older and being you know 10 years in the game as an entrepreneur, I understand why everybody isn't going to be successful. I believe everybody can. But the willpower that it takes, the, ten the tenacity, the grit, the grind, the hustle, the faith, the determination to get back up again, learning how to, in a healthy way, compartmentalize your emotions and get the job done and do what you need to do to be to be your best and and on the flip side for those of you who are watching and you're constantly being that safety net or throwing that floaty out to people. You're, you're enabling them. They're not gonna get any better. I remember, you know, when I moved back home from college, my mom, you know, just being a mother, right? She was just like, why don't you just, you know, go join the military? Like, why don't you just enlist and do this or that? And uh, she just kept like, you know, in a loving way, I'm saying this, but she just kept nagging me. And I told her, I had a conversation with her one day. I said, listen, mom, I was like, mom, I got a vision and a purpose, you know, that I'm trying to discover. Like, I, I know that I'm on the right track. And as a, as a man, you got to just let me figure this out. Like, I, I legit told my mom that and I meant it in love and it was a healthy conversation. And this is the type of relationship I have with my mother, you know. And so I told her that I was just like, mom, you got to stop trying to tell me what to do. Like, you got to let me figure this out for myself as a man, because I think that's just that nurturing instinct within a woman is that you want to be there for your for your son or your daughter and you want to see them succeed but you got to trust that when they were on the cement when they were on the ground before they got in the water before they got in the tree that you train them on the way that they should go and now you got to watch their actions and allow them to learn from life all right so i just want to drop in and share that with you guys today um this is my last day in buenos aires argentina it is a beautiful day out hanging out in uh in a park before my flight anyway i gotta go i'll be back soon guys peace